This is worksheet one of the stoichiometry packet. Uh, fair warning, this is a worksheet that is usually relatively challenging for students at first, um, but have no fear, once you've mastered worksheet one, worksheets two and three follow the same method and actually get easier. So put your focus into mastering worksheet one, and the rest of the unit will come much more easily. Uh, the word stoichiometry is large and strange and hard to pronounce, but basically we are going to combine what we learned about a mole, that it's equal to a molar mass, Avogadro's number, and 22.4 liters of a gas, with the idea of a balanced equation. And when we combine those two ideas, we have a technique called stoichiometry, which basically tells us um, if we are given information about how many reactants we start with in a chemical reaction, we can predict how many products we will end with. And as you might imagine, that's very important to chemists. So let's look at an example. Right here, the example says how many grams of oxygen would be produced if we decompose or react 868 grams of mercury oxide. So I want you to notice, um, and this will be the case in all worksheet one problems, that we are given information about the reactant in grams and we are asked to find information about the product in grams. So grams are a unit of mass, which is why worksheet one is called mass to mass problems. This is what will change in the other packet, or in the other, excuse me, worksheets, but I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So let's focus on this example. Uh, the first step is really not going to be a step for you. Uh, it says to write a balanced equation describing the reaction. Um, but I note here that the balanced equation in this packet will always be provided for you. Um, so just kind of reorient yourself. Remember that in a balanced equation, we have our reactants on the left, our products on the right, and these big numbers in front here are called coefficients. Um, and since oxygen doesn't have a coefficient, we assume it to be 1. Okay, now when we last talked about equations, we hadn't talked about moles yet. These coefficients, the 2, the 2, and the 1 here, they're actually telling you how many moles of each thing you have, and that's going to become relevant um, later on in this problem. So once you have your balanced equation, your second step is going to be to pull information out of the problem. So you are going to write... Uh, that in this problem they told us that we have 868 grams of mercury oxide. I'm going to write that right here over the mercury oxide in the equation. And in this problem I'm asked to find grams of oxygen, so I am going to write X grams, or some people write question mark grams, over the oxygen. It's really important at this point, as noted right here, that you cross out the extras. In other words, in this problem, they didn't tell us anything about mercury, Hg. So in this problem, that's just kind of like extra information in a math problem. And a lot of times, these extra pieces of information accidentally creep into people's calculations. Number one mistake I see on this worksheet. So cross out the extras. Don't be a victim of that mistake. Third step you are going to write the number of moles below the formulas. So, here's where we look at the coefficients. Since there is a big 2 in front of the HGO, that tells us that we have 2 moles of mercury oxide to start off with. Since there is no coefficient in front of the oxygen, that tells us that we are ending with 1 mole of oxygen in this reaction. So we rewrite them just to emphasize that. Okay, moving along. Our fourth step, something you already know how to do. 
we're going to need to calculate the molar mass of just the two things we're dealing with in this problem. In other words, the molar mass of the mercury oxide and the molar mass of the oxygen. Do not waste your time calculating the mass of the mercury because, again, it's just extra information here. Okay? You have done this calculation many times before in the moles packet, right? You look up the weight of mercury on the periodic table. You look up the weight of oxygen on the periodic table. You add them together. For oxygen, because there are two O's, you multiply the weight of oxygen by two. Right? Number two mistake I see people making on this worksheet. They look at the balanced equation and they say, oh, there are two mercury oxides. So they try to multiply this number here by two, right? Eh, wrong. Don't do that. Okay? Remember, a molar mass tells us how many grams are in one mole regardless of the fact that in this particular equation we have two moles of it. You're going to account for that two moles later on in your factor label problem. If you do it now, then you're going to end up doubling your final answer. You don't want to do that. Your answer will be wrong. Okay, step five. Factor label comes back into play. You guys are pros at factor label now. Okay, this is going to look like a long, confusing factor label, but you're always going to set it up in the same way. You are always going to have three factor label steps in every problem, not only on this worksheet, but in the whole packet. All right, and on this worksheet, they're always going to go in the same order. So it's worth it to write down what I'm about to go through. All right. Just like always, we start off our factor label by writing down what we've been given, that we have 868 grams of mercury oxide, and what we want to find. So in this case, our unknown, we want to know the number of grams of oxygen. Right? Then, we need to set up our factor label. So, since we are starting off in grams of mercury oxide, the first step is going to be using the molar mass of the mercury oxide. So see how I wrote molar mass of the given? Mercury oxide is what we've been given information about, right? So we're always going to use the molar mass of the given in our first factor label step on this worksheet. Okay? We put the moles on top and we put the grams of mercury oxide on the bottom so that we can cancel out grams of mercury oxide. It's not enough in this packet anymore to just write grams and moles because this factor label problem is going to have grams and moles of mercury oxide, but later it's going to have grams and moles of oxygen. So you have to write the formulas in. One, because you'll lose points on the test if you don't, and two, in my opinion more importantly, you'll get yourself confused and you'll put numbers in in the wrong places, top versus bottom of your fractions if you don't. All right. Your second step. This is a step we've never done before in a factor label problem. It's going to be what I call the mole to mole step. All right. Follow me here. You've got to go back up to step three right here. And you've got to look at the fact that this equation tells you that if you start off with two moles of mercury oxide, you're going to produce one mole of oxygen. Okay, the step's a little different because it's not saying that two moles of mercury oxide is equal to one mole of oxygen, right? I'm not saying if you woke up one morning and somebody said, oops, we're out of oxygen today, we're going to replace the air you breathe with mercury oxide, that you'd be totally thrilled because they're equal. They're not equal, obviously. But this equation is saying that if you start off with two moles of mercury oxide, when it decomposes, it's going to break down into one mole of oxygen. And so that's where this mole to mole step is coming from. So we put the two moles of mercury oxide on the bottom and the one mole of oxygen on the top simply because our units tell us that we want to cancel out moles of mercury oxide that are on the top in our first factor label step, so we need moles of mercury oxide down on the bottom. All right? See how if you had not labeled moles of mercury oxide in the first step, you wouldn't have known if you should put the two moles of mercury oxide 
in the bottom of the second step or in the top of the second step. That's why using the formulas is so important. All right, final step. The third step in this worksheet is always going to use the molar mass of the unknown, the thing that we're trying to solve for, which in this case is the oxygen. So, since I have one mole of oxygen in the top of my second factor label step, I need one mole of oxygen in the bottom of my third step, so they cancel out. That leaves me with the only units uncanceled as grams of oxygen, which is good because that's what I wanted to solve for. So now I go through and I do my multiplication and division, just like I did in the moles packet. I'm going to do my 868 times my 32 divided by 216.59, and then again divided by 2. And if I've done that correctly, it's going to give me a number that I can round to 64.1 grams of oxygen. All right. Those were a lot of steps. For the first couple problems that you do in class the next time we meet, you're probably going to need to go back to these notes and walk yourself through it step by step. The key to mastering this worksheet and this packet, really, is to be very organized in how you write things out. Make sure to label your factor label problem completely, including formulas, and walk yourself through each step. If you skip a step, you're not going to come to the right final answer. If you need a little bit more practice, you can go through the example down here for another problem. And when we get to class next, you're going to do a whole bunch of these problems until you feel confident.